Good afternoon. It's funny. <laughs> I'm going to see every one of my talks sounds the same when it starts. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 760. And the topic today is um, how do you deal with disappointment in dating? And what is your due diligence? Because um, I want to break this down because actually a bunch of layers that I've been having conversations about recently. And so this is very relevant. Uh, especially if you're not if you're not dating, if you're in the chance of connecting with people, looking to have a good relationship, you want to listen up. And of course, you may be paying the price now, so you might want to listen up for next time. Before I get into all of that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. As it says in the title somewhere, I am the best. I'm the author of the best-selling book, Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples that are powerful principles for healthy relationships, and it works for everybody. So you can get that book up with the link in the comments at the end. I'm also a relationship attraction expert and an inspirational speaker helping women create balance in love, life, and business. Uh, I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspires my work and informs my work with women, and also why I do these talks every day. Over two years ago, it started with this stuff called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're going to talk about dating and the disappointments of, I won't say poor choices, as much as poor results. I'm going to explain that in a moment too. And what, what is your due diligence? How do you go about it? What, what are your ways of deciding if the person you're meeting is someone you really want to date or not? Because a lot of us, including myself, are fooled by the, the, the glossy appearance. So I'll break this down a bit and give you some clues, some insights, and some tips on what can help you get um, better results. That's simple. So first of all, um, the dating apps. <laughs> Of all the systems out there to make things harder, the dating apps probably come top of the list. Very closely followed by dating sites, and everything else comes underneath that. But the thing is that dating apps are, I, I'm just saying I put this politely. First of all, there's no governance about what somebody puts on their profile when you go to a dating app or dating site. And I'm using it interchangeably because they work the same way, which is somebody puts up a profile, which is, you know, some pictures that may or may not be relevant, may not even be frankly their own timing or they might be just done such a way that you can't tell who they are I've actually seen dating pictures of women I'm looking at where every single picture has sunglasses on or every single picture is them with four other people so you can't even see closely who they are and I'm not talking about necessarily you know distilled pictures of who they look like but it's nice to be able to see what somebody looks like in their pictures because a lot of times they don't do that very well the second part is what they write about themselves which could be incredibly great fiction or it might be fact we don't know so due diligence is not just simply making sure, well, the first step is to make sure what you see and what you read on someone's dating app uh, profile or website profile, if it's a dating site, um, if it has that much information, you can actually see if there's anything that you know very clearly doesn't match or does match. But that's only the first step. That's only number one, because frankly, a lot of the stuff you won't know about until you meet them, which for women can be challenging because they don't always want to meet a man they don't trust. So I'll just, I'll bring in my, default um, pre-date recommendation, which is to meet somebody first time in daylight in a, in, a, in a public place where you can hang out somewhere cheap, there's no investment, and there's no responsibility. The thing is, I do recommend that when you meet someone the first time, you go for coffee or for ice cream or something simple because there's no responsibility and there's no um, presumed burden of, um, what's I'm looking for? I just lost the word. Um, favor that's owed that makes sense so that is the, the f that's the environment in which you can do some due diligence which is ask questions now some things I'm going to talk about it's not just the initial things like first of all they're an axe murderer or something <laughs> obviously heinous but the fact that they look like their pictures is a good start because when you meet somebody in person you have a better sense of what they're about because you can see what they look like you can see how they interact can they articulate more than two syllable words can they have a conversation that's fun can they be in inviting can they be entertaining can they be enjoyable or are they very stilted very held back this is very cursory stuff i'm going to talk about some deeper stuff in a moment but just the level of understanding that you can get by meeting someone for the first time could give you a sense if you want to go any further now i'm watching people i know against relationships on the most on the thinnest the thinnest possible um what's i'm looking for the thinnest truth about the other person. So this is like 
stepping stones or a hierarchy of, of dating information that give you some clues. But the due diligence I'm talking about is to go deeper than that. I was talking to a friend of mine today who's going through some challenges with this girl he's dating because he's done a fair bit of work on himself, done a lot of seminars and retreats, and she hasn't. And he's getting, he's kicking his head, he's kicking the wall because he's so or kicking himself because he's feeling like he ends up, ends up ends up having to fight the fact that she's not willing to do the work. Not an action, but let me say another way: she's not very emotionally mature, or or have emotional mastery in any level. And I've been doing this work now for, I've been in the personal growth journey for over 35, or for 35 years now. That makes me sound so old. <laughs> but the truth is, having done that, it's hard to be around people who don't have any facility to work through their own process. Meaning that when they get upset, they look at how they are causing that upset versus reactionary and upset and victimized and judging other people. Now, if you're in a relationship with somebody like that, and that's something you've grown beyond, you can have compassion but you may not want to stay there. And this is the thing, is that this journey we're on in, as human beings, for some people, it got stunted at the time they got out of school or out, actually out of home. And so they haven't done any work since then to develop themselves, to become better human beings, to be more compassionate, more open, more loving, any of that stuff. And so they're carrying a lot of judgments, assumptions, and crap around with them, which you may not want to be around. So it does, and, it, and just so you know, all this stuff I'm talking about is not likely to be on their profile whether it's a dating app or dating site, as I mentioned. What's also interesting for me is I, I know several matchmakers, and I'm not going to out, out any of them because I'm not saying who's which one, but some of the matchmaking services out there are purely putting numbers together. You know, the, 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 I've, I've seen posts in some of the groups I belong to about the, the, there's a, a 36, uh, no, what's one I saw? Someone, someone's lines of some like a 42-year-old male Jewish doctor living in New York who wants to date a woman who's blonde and between 25 and 32 hasn't had any kids and this sort of stuff and this is the criteria they're using there's no criteria to say would they actually be compatible beyond physical characteristics and so the problem is if you're using a matchmaking service whether it's a personal matchmaker or a company that does matchmaking even with them i highly recommend you do your due diligence to actually check out what they do what they provide because some people are laying down 5 10 15 25,000 dollars to work with the matchmaker who's simply delivering a numbers game, just fitting basic characteristics, height, weight, looks, age, and location. It's, it's ridiculously simplistic, and that's the problem with dating, because I believe dating is not that simple. I should say, I don't believe relationships are that simple. In fact, I know they're not that simple. And if you've watched my talks before, you know I've talked quite a bit about how we tend to attract people who we have unresolved patterns with, that that other person provides the feedback for, or the interaction, or the dovetailing patterns to go together with that so we can work through our stuff. That's the joy of doing the work consciously is you know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, it's, it's like being in hell. So having awareness, first of all, of what you're really looking for beyond the appearance or beyond the you know, core three or four identification pieces is a good start. Secondly, is also to work through your childhood stuff. And I've talked about this quite a few times before, uh, last week especially, um, to really do the work to know that what you're dealing with is your stuff, so you can work through it. Excuse me, it sounds so simplistic, but the truth is most people have no clue about this. Most people have no, <sighs> awareness of being aware. It's like a double layer, same thing. And for me, this, this is one of the big, 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 biggest pieces of the work. I was talking with a friend of mine today about how my work is shifting a lot to doing a lot about self centered, self-supportive, self self-facilitated self practice. And I'm passionate about this because I really want to um, support my clients and I'm, this is what I do with my clients. So the clients who want to work with me have to be ready and really willing to, to go deeper. They're just like, find me a match, find me a partner. My work is to help you become the best partner you can be for yourself first. So you're no longer in a place of codependent need. You're no longer in a place of um, um, I was going to say, driving, um, sorry, I, got, I saw a message on the screen just distracted me. Let me, put, me come back. Let me center myself again. Okay, back in here again. <sighs> All right. Working with my clients, I'm very passionate about having them have the best possibly for love, for life, for joy, for celebration of who they are in their lives. So any relationship they draw into their lives has to be additive to that. I know quite a few people have gone into a relationship where the relationship didn't add to their lives, it's subtracted from their lives. I'm not a fan of that. 
So in my work with my clients, I'm very passionate about inspiring them and inviting them to really own their own place in life. So they honor and respect themselves. They remember their worthiness and whatever's in the way of them having the right relationship. I help them resolve, release, and, and um, well, re re release is a good place to stop. <laughs> I was thinking of a third thing to say and didn't have anything come through for that one, so, so be it. But the thing is, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people go out on dates, meet somebody at a social, you know, social environment, meet people in a business environment, meet people in a spiritual environment, and just go on dates with them without any real desire to go deeper. And I'm a fan of getting to know somebody, yes, but let's ask the, let's ask the harder questions. Let's ask the questions that ask them where they stand on views. What are their views about what they want in life? Yes, they might be compatible because they're the right age, the right looks, they, you smile at each other, that's great. That's a starting point. But if that's all you're using to get into a relationship, I wouldn't say I feel sorry for you, but I certainly have concern for your, the longevity of that relationship. I believe it's worth doing the due diligence to really learn about the other person. And separately from that, to learn about yourself. You may have these lists of all these things you want of these criteria, but you've still got all these unrolled patterns inside you haven't resolved yet. And if this isn't resolved, this criteria may not actually happen because your patterns will re your pat your patterns will override your intentions. So you've got to do work for yourself as well. That's why my work with my clients, most of the work is inward. It isn't about out there; it's about inside. You know, some coaches say, "Well, I'm going to put you on ten dates a week, and you're going to go through the practice of going on these dates." That's great once you've done the inner work. But the truth is, unless you do the inner work, those dates are going to be pointless. I'm a big I mean, I stand for this and I speak for this and I'm very adamant about this. You need to do the work for yourself. That's why my work is so much more about self-support and self-guidance um, to have what you really want in life. Of course, it's always a choice. You can just go on dates and dates and just hope you, you know, eventually you'll be lucky and you'll meet somebody. Good luck with that. But if you follow me and you watch any of my broadcasts, and I've got quite a few under my belt, as you know by now, my focus is to really help you have what you want by putting in a position where you get to be who you want to be to have what you want, if that makes some sort of sense. <laughs> so in my work, and I've, I'll put, I said I'll put the book in the, I'll put the bit, link for the book in the comments, first of all. I'll also put a link in the comments for Coming Home to Yourself. It's my newest offering, which is about how to come back to yourself and own and honor who you are. For those people looking to be more self-loving, self-supportive, and self-aligned, it's, it's my new beta program. It's not, it's, not li it's not released yet, it's private, but you can check it out, and I'll put the link in the comments for that. And the third piece will be a discovery session, uh, sorry, a complimentary clarity conversation. I keep calling it a discovery session. I'm rebranding it. It's a complimentary clarity conversation, a chat with me that I'll put in the comments as well. Because if you really want to face your demons and get through this and get to the other side so you can have what you want in a relationship, that's where you want to go deep. I'll meet you there. I think that's been my rant for the day. <laughs> I want to talk about this a little bit just to plant some seeds and hopefully inspire some thoughts. I know there's more to it than just this. This is just a teaser. And what's possible but you can have what you want but you've got to know where you are in your life and who you are to have what you want and that's what i'm talking about here so if you have any thoughts or questions you want to ask me about this please put them in the below and i'll respond when i sign off i do um tend to provoke response <laughs> kind of my way of being so i do invite you to consider for yourself what's true for you and what what you really value in love and relationships this is my work my passion my service to my audience primarily to women but men can listen too and I do this talk every day. This is my daily Facebook Live, in case you hadn't already figured that out. It goes on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, and it goes at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Um, occasionally there's some caveats on that. I think Thursday might be one of those, being July 4th coming up. Um, also, the replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, there's a whole bunch of replays. You can see them on, on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'll give you the links for that. My replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. And also to my YouTube channel, which you can subscribe, subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. By the way, all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. Um, and that's about it. If you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below. If you want to get some help, reach out to me. I'll put links in the comments so you can find me. And I will be back in tomorrow with something else juicy and fun about relationships and love and self-support. So I thank you for watching. I thank you, as always, for, for being involved. And I hope you find value from this. I'll be back in tomorrow, so I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.